Today we're going to install Fingino open source firmware on the Wook Wired Cam Pro. What's up guys? It's Josh from the WL Tech Blog. Today we've got the 2K Wired Cam Pro from Wook that I think you guys should be buying instead of the WiseCam V3. Let's check it out. Now, if you're new to the Fingino project, we provide an open source firmware replacement for IP cameras based on the Ingenic processor platform. And that includes a lot of affordable brands you can find on Amazon and elsewhere. I'll definitely have a link to this camera and some of my other favorites down in the video description. So make sure and check that out. All right, this still is not an unboxing channel, but here we have it in the box. Let's have a look and see what it says. Got some specs, got a little picture of a house, got a little picture of a phone, got the front, basic stuff. Let's crack it open and get the contents out. And there we go. You see the little camera it is an awful little guy compared to some of these other cameras that we work with. And here's the box. This has got our USB power cable, our power adapter, and a mounting plate if you wanted to permanently attach this someplace. And screw guide, screws, all the extra crap. The power supply is one and a half amp, which is way more than necessary. These things usually take under 400 milliamp. All right, let's get rid of all this stuff. One of my favorite cameras to use with Thingino is the pan tilt zoom version of the Wook. This is the Y0510, and this has long been kind of my flagship camera and the one that I generally recommend to folks. If you're looking for something that has pan and tilt that you're gonna use indoor, you're not gonna beat this camera. Now this little guy actually has the same image sensor and processor that you find in the pan tilt model. So it's got a very high resolution image, very high quality, and it has the higher end processor, much better than what you're going to find in some of the cheaper cameras. The main difference here is the size. Obviously this one is much smaller by comparison. This one compares favorably against cameras from wise the little cubes as far as size goes this is still not an outdoor capable device so if you're looking for something to put outside i uh, don't recommend getting this one now, i've done a couple camera videos recently where i did not take the camera apart because you didn't need to however you both don't need to and probably shouldn't on this one but i'm going to do it for you so you can see what's inside But first, this has a plastic film. Let's give it a little peel. Ooh. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how much time I spent figuring out how to open this thing, but I've got some gouges on the case of mine because I started in the wrong place. You should not start just prying it apart at the seam. Instead, you need to take the faceplate off, which I was able to do with a razor and some patience. And once you get this off, it reveals a screw hole at the bottom. The screw goes through the pedestal mount and holds the whole camera together. You do have some plastic clips along the sides, but they are not the primary thing holding it together. So let's get the screw out. It also is a bit longer than you'd expect. All right, I've got the screw out and it will come apart with a little bit of a squeeze. There we go. And here we've got the front of the board with the sensor. And let me pop this guy out and see what's on the back. 
there's two screws holding the main PCB in place. So we get those out. And then the whole thing just pops right out. Now here's some high resolution photos of the board itself. If you want to see it in more detail, just hit pause and you can check it out. I really like how they've got all the test pads really nicely labeled, all the UART stuff, it's all easy. But we're not gonna need any of that. So let's go ahead and get this guy put back together. All right, we're gonna do this one in Linux. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my web browser here. And we're going to go over to the Thingino installer's GitHub repo. The link for that is down in the video description. Now we're going to go over to the Wook YO310. And you see here there's a zip file. Make sure and read the readme here because if something updates there, that's going to take precedence over this video. Anyway, click on the, uh, the zip file there. And on the right, there's a link to download the file. And once you get that saved, we're going to jump over to our imager. In this case, I'm using Raspberry Pi imager, which is available for Windows, Linux, or Mac. And it's pretty easy to use and has all the features that we need to achieve our goal here. We're going to go ahead and go to select the OS, set it to custom, grab our zip file. We're going to choose our storage, which is our SD card. I'm using 128 megabyte. And it's going to ask if we want to customize, which we don't. And then we put in our password, and it's going to write. And it's a pretty small image, so it only takes a few seconds to write. And it'll also do a validation step to make sure that the image that we wrote matches the image from the file. And this is 128 megabytes, not 128 gigabytes. So definitely the smaller card you have, the better when it comes to these things. I tend to not have cards over 32 gigs. That seems to be about the limit for having perfect compatibility with these cams. And the process is done. We're going to go ahead and pop the SD card out. And we are done with Linux. All right, I've got a cam and our SD card. It only goes in one way and it doesn't show you which way. So you always get it on the second try. We're gonna do this in real time. So if you're following along at home, it should match exactly. Let's go ahead and plug in the power cord and get the process started. So here we go, you see the red lights on. And this cam has a 16 megabyte flash chip where a lot of the cams only have eight. So the process of flashing takes about twice as long. I've also recently upgraded the Wook installers so that they're going to take a backup of your factory firmware. If for some reason you decided that you wanted to go back to the Wook ecosystem, see we've got a change there. Personally, I have no use for the Wook ecosystem. I just like their cameras. Now, I also have my phone out here. We're going to keep an eye out for the provisioning Wi-Fi network to come up. We're still at the programming stage right now. That first section was just doing the backup. So right now it is writing the Thingino firmware file. Now, once it does come up, we're going to have a new Wi-Fi network that will allow us to configure the camera. But as I mentioned, we are doing this in real time. So if you're following along at home, it should take exactly the same amount of time. Now, if you are shopping for these cameras, I bought this one for about $32 on Amazon. I just looked and it was $29 right now. So definitely check the link in the video description to get one for yourself. And there's our provisioning network. We're going to go ahead and connect to it. Now, most phones, once you connect to the provisioning 
Wi-Fi network will connect you directly to the portal page. With the recent update, mine does not, and I have to actually turn off mobile data and then open my browser. If you have an iPhone, you'll probably have to do this too, but you open your browser, and when it comes up, you punch in 172.16.0.1, and that's going to bring you to the config portal. So it'll look just like this. And you'll put in your root password, put in the Wi-Fi SSID and password of a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network. Remember the all the passwords, the SSID and the Wi-Fi password are all case sensitive, so they have to match perfectly. Once you get that in and submit, it'll take you to a confirmation page, go ahead and hit OK on that, and it'll save the settings and start rebooting. So at this point, you can go ahead and pop out the SD card and just give it a minute to boot up. Now once you have that, let me show you a nice little trick. Now once the flash is complete, you can look up the IP address of your new camera in your router, or you can take the little button on the side, give it a click. IP address is 192.168.82.211. And it will read it right out to you. Go ahead and put that IP address in your web browser, and it's going to prompt you for the root username and the password that you set in the config portal and bring you to the web UI. So you can see there we are. Hello world. And here's a little sample of the video and audio recorded by the Wook. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this video. We've got the camera installed with Thingino. We've done some demo footage of it. You've seen the teardown, and hopefully you enjoyed it. If so, make sure and give me a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, give me a subscribe. I really appreciate it. Any questions or comments you have down below, make sure and leave them there, and I try to reply to everybody. If you want to hang out, participate in the project, or if you need help, if your install didn't go as smoothly as mine did, I've got our link to our Discord channel down in the video description. Feel free to jump over there and say hi. Well, thanks for watching all the way to the end, and hope to see you in the next video. Until then, stay fresh, cheese bags.